Hey there! In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can use Photoshop and Illustrator to create uh, very stark black and white comics in the style of Frank Miller. Uh, this entire tutorial is rated N for noob, which means that there are going to be frequent um, shortcuts, hints, tips and Photoshop advice for people who aren't familiar with the program. If you are someone who is excellent at illustration and you have an advanced knowledge of Photoshop then this tutorial probably isn't for you. The first thing you're going to need to do when you want to create a really awesome uh, noir style comic is to create a new document in Photoshop. When you do that, what you basically need to do is, of course, give the uh, document a name. I'm going to call mine Comic Book Page 1. And the other thing you have to do is choose a size of paper that's appropriate um, to the part of the world that you're living in. I'm going to pick um, A4 from the list of international um, formats of paper here. The other thing that you're going to need to do is, because you're in hopefully intending to print this out as, as well as put it on the web to impress all of your friends, you need to make sure that uh, the resolution is 300 dpi. If your computer chugs a little bit, uh, maybe you could drop that down to 150. Um, it'll make working a little bit easier. The other thing I'm just going to make sure is, of course, that the color mode is set to RGB, CMYK. I don't particularly mind, but that's just me and probably the wrong thing to do. Hey, I was going to call that page one, wasn't I? I'm going to hit OK. Now the first thing you need to do um, when you're preparing to lay out your comic book is go to the view menu and make sure that you have rulers checked. If you look at the top of my canvas you'll notice you can see a ruler atop, uh, across the top of it. The other thing you want to do is go to uh, make sure snap is enabled and that you're snapping to guides. You'll notice that I've got rulers, snap and guides all checked here and it'll make it a lot easier when you're working with your comic. The next thing I'm going to do is demonstrate how to use guides. Now if you grab the move tool and of course you can get that by hitting V on your keyboard uh, you get a little tooltip whenever you mouse over a tool in Photoshop here you'll notice that it's V. I'm going to start to use some guides here and the way you get a guide, a non-printing guide onto your canvas is by holding the mouse button down on the uh, ruler either at the top or the side of the page and dragging onto the canvas. Now you'll notice that uh, when you do this you create um, by default a very small thin blue line. I'm also going to drag one um, off the left here, drag one over here and I'm just basically setting up the margins for my page at the moment. What I'm going to start to do now is uh, set up the boundaries of the panels. Uh, so I think I'll have a height of roughly that. You can always change these later on. It doesn't particularly uh, matter when you're starting out. And what you'll notice um, here is that I've defined the very first panel of my um, fantastic comic. And I've got the guides uh, delineating uh, that first frame. I'm going to zoom in now and um, work in 100%. I can do this in a couple of ways. Um, I can type 100% um, in here. Or I can go up to the view menu and go to actual, picture, actual pixels. Either way works. Whatever you like. And what you'll notice here is that I have the very first frame of my comic. Now when I create uh, speech bubbles and panels in this particular comic, I'm going to be using the path tools in Photoshop. And the reason I'm doing this is because down the track I might want to make a panel bigger, I might want to adjust the size of a speech bubble, and if I'm working with vector objects as opposed to um, bitmap images I've drawn in my document, it's going to be a lot easier and it's still going to look good. It's not going to pixelate at all. Photoshop. Um, can reduce the amount of pixelation to an extent but it never quite looks right. So to draw my first panel what I'm going to do is grab the um, rectangle tool down here. Now you'll notice all of the uh, vector tools in Photoshop have their own little piece of real estate in the toolbox. You'll notice the pen tool, the text tool, um, you've got the um, path selection tools here and you've got the shape tools. Uh, I'm going to start off by drawing a rectangle now whenever you choose any sort of tool in Photoshop, the options for that tool appear in the options bar at the top of the screen. If you don't see the option bar, uh, go to Window and make sure that the options um, bar is checked there and you'll be able to see it. 
Now first up, you'll notice that um, I've got a color up here and I don't want to make my panel black, so I'm just going to click on that and change the color to white. So you'll notice I've changed that to white. And what I'm going to do now is draw a panel that fits into uh, this, uh, the guides that I've set up. And when I do that, you'll notice that there's a, a very thin line that's showing me where my path is. Now this is what it looks over, like over in the layers palette. You'll notice here that uh, I, you can see the uh, the vector mask that's been set up here, and the color of the um, object that I've drawn. If you want to change the color of the object, you can always do that at any time by double clicking on um, this color slider here. And so, for instance, I could change um, the panel to background panel to red. I obviously don't want to do that, so I'm going to return it to white. But it's a good thing to know, particularly if you draw the wrong color. Um, object to start off with. The next thing I'm going to do, um, of course, basically what I have here is a white shape on a white canvas. It's not looking particularly wonderful and the way I'm going to add um, a stroke around this object is by going to the um, add a layer style button at the bottom of the layers palette. When I hold my mouse button down on here you'll notice that I'm given a number of options. I'm going to choose stroke. Now by default on my computer, and I don't know whether this goes for all versions of Photoshop, but the, the color of this, um, the stroke is red to start off with. I'm going to change that to black, and you'll notice that it looks reasonably good. Um, I have a size of 3 pixels, uh, which works for my document. If I wanted to make it thicker, I could adjust the um, slider here, but I'm going to leave that at three, 3 pixels because I think it looks pretty good. The other thing I'm going to do here is create a, um, a very subtle drop shadow um, with my uh, first panel, and just just a really subtle one to lift it off the page a little bit, and that looks kind of cool. So I'm going to hit OK, and if I grab the Move tool over here and scroll around a little bit, you'll notice that it's looking pretty good. It's got a stroke around the edge, and um, it's got a very, very subtle drop shadow there. So that's how you create your first frame in Photoshop. If you want to change the size of your frame at any time, make sure you click on the vector mask in the um, layers palette. Go to edit, free transform path, and you'll get some handles like this. So you can adjust the size of your panel. You can make it stretch the entire size of the page. and because we're using layer styles, it's resizing um, the stroke and the drop shadow appropriately when we do that. When you're done, of course, just hit enter. Once you have one panel in your comic book, it's really, really easy to make all of the rest. What I'm going to do is grab the Move tool, hold down the Option key, um, that's the Alt key on a PC, and simply drag that panel across like that, holding down the option key. You can hold down shift if you want to get it to line up with the previous one as well. And there I have two panels. And once you have um, a couple of panels like that, you can really easily um, move them around the page, just copy and populate your uh, document with panels. So once you've created the first one, it's really easy to fill up the page. You'll notice here that I've got a bit of white space. I'll fix that up later.